Okay, so we are back. Um, got Dishonored loaded up here. Um, and I think... Yeah, let's go ahead and get some um, mana cheats actually set up. So I've got mana hooked again here. I think we're kind of ready. Um, so what we can do is find out what accesses this address. Hopefully, once again, I don't hide a bunch of stuff behind that game window. Um, so here we can see we got three that fire when we use. And then two shared, but three that fire when we're recharging. Um, and it actually does fire 20 times. Since it increases 20, then we can know that when it's charging, it's just increasing by one each time. Because um, if it was anything else, it would be less than 20. So, and then since the right instruction is a shared one, that means this is an actual, I would call this a right, and not just, it's not just increasing, it's both increasing and decreasing there. Um, let's go ahead and stop that. <laughs> so that means we need to figure out where it's calculating stuff for increase and decrease. I don't see anything that's any kind of sub beside what it's doing with ECX, but that's the stack pointer, so that's not what we're looking for. Um, so what we can do real quick here is just uh, break and trace. Probably only need about 500 lines. Um, we'll go ahead and say step over, skip system modules. Let's get that over here. And then I just kind of prefer break and trace, but um, one other option we do have is we could kind of scroll down in here and look for a return. So if we select that return and then find out what addresses this instruction accesses, um, we can actually get whatever addresses that returns to. So we can see that one's where we use, and then there's where we um, recharge. So it is two different spots calling this function. Like I said, I kind of just prefer using break and trace. Um, but whichever works better for you is, is fine. Um, so if we come on back here, now we can see we got, yeah, so that's our mana value setting ECX. And then here ECX is being, um, you know, subtracted or EDI is being subtracted from ECX. Um, so EDI is our decrease amount. And then I'm willing to bet that right there. I am curious what this is real quick. Yeah, probably some kind of function. At the very least an address. Something we may want to mess with just yet. It's possible it's a float value. Nah, I'd definitely say that's an address. Um, so, oh, yeah, come back here. Oh, I should have checked what EDI was before I closed that. That won't actually get us what EDI is. So, yeah, let's. Look at that one more time real quick, and we'll see that EDI is what we think it should be. should be 20. And 1.4 is hex 20. Go ahead and confirm that. Um, if you're unaware, the normal Windows calendar does, or calculator, does have a um, programmer mode. So here we can just put in hex 1.4, convert it to decimal, and it is in fact 20. 
So we could inject here. Um, the only issue we might run into is sometimes at the start of a function, this stuff will be pretty generic, and thus it can be hard to get a good AOB with it. Yeah, over here, just so we can see it. Yeah, so we might end up wanting to come on down here anyway, just so at the very least we can get a good AOB going. Ooh, wow. The main reason why I don't want to inject directly on this sub, or on this subtraction one, is just because that would put us right into the um, push here, and that can make things a little funky. Um, I try and take a little bit off that now. Gotta be that whole thing there. Okay. So, here we're going to do Control A, Control Alt do no let's, let's do it with the value so control alt 7 and that'll be the uh, custom AOB full injection with values um, we're not offsetting our injection point so that'll be fine and this is mana decrease <coughs> excuse me whatever um, naming conventions you want to use I would just say be consistent um, so definitely use something that makes sense to you so you will use it, you know, more often. Um, I tend to prefer, so like back at that first instruction where it writes to it both when it, you know, both when it increases or decreases. Um, if I were to eject there, I would call it mana RT or WRT for mana write. So that way I would know that that is a, you know, it sets it both up and down. Um, whereas if it's only going to be dealing with things when it's decreasing then I'll call this you know mana decrease or you know DEC and then um, same thing with if it's only increasing I would call it um, INC increase um, just so that way even a year from now I could easily tell what what goes on in in the area of code that this is being injected to Let's go ahead and go back to this before I start getting too far into this. I don't want to deal with an integer. Um, and we absolutely could deal with an integer. We could do like an I divide. Um, I would say to an extent you could use I mall, but we would actually be increasing the amount. Um, so we don't really want to do that. Um, but the catch with like I mall and I divide is it's with an integer and thus you're kind of stuck in one direction because you can't use like less than a number, you know, less than one. Um, whereas if we do set this up to work with a float, that will allow us the ability to go up or down, you know. So this way if later on I wanted to use more mana because I want more of a challenge, I can make it a number greater than one. Um, and then if I want it to be less mana because I'm just wanting to screw around or whatever the case may be, I can make it a value less than one. Um, and then it also makes fine tuning it a lot easier. Um, so one thing I forgot to mention with uh, multiplying and dividing integers is we've got a couple different instructions. Um, so we've got like a standard mall, a standard div, and then you've got I mall and I divide or I div. Um, and the difference with these is that um, so like the normal mall and normal divide these or divide um, these are for unsigned integers. So technically these you can only go one direction. Um, but technically these 
are four sine integers. So you can actually go the opposite direction. Um, but again, it, it gets a little funky at that point because instead of increasing or decreasing the value but always keeping it in the same sign, you know, so that way it would still be positive. Um, so in the case of like with what we were talking about with subtracting a value, um, you know, it does need to be a positive number. Otherwise, uh, obviously, if you subtract, it, you know, any number by, you know, a negative number, you then actually end up adding because the two, you know, the subtraction and the negative end up, you know, um, canceling each other out and they become a plus more or less if you remember this from math when you were younger um so that is where you know i, I was kind of saying you could only go one direction but it's not entirely true with i mall and i div um you can technically go the other direction but you're going to change the sign um so that's where like i say i you know i prefer to go with the float because i can you know go with something up, you know greater than zero but under one and thus change it to make it less or I can go with you know something or at least when I'm multiplying um, or go with something that's greater than one and then make it more um, so you know saying that you can only go one direction with I'm all and I div isn't entirely correct but in the context of what we're trying to do it kind of is um, but mostly just because, you know, so if we had our, our mana was 100 and then the value was de going to decrease by its 20, and then we used imol with um, negative 2, um, it would make, you know, of course it would make the 20 into negative 40, um, which really wouldn't work because then it would just be adding 40 to our current mana value um, so you know we wouldn't just be using less we would actually just be increasing mana every time you tried to use mana which you know that is something you could totally do if you wanted to um, again one of the infinite mana ways we came up with or you'll see that we come up with you know I would say would be better but <laughs> but ultimately I did just want to kind of touch on that to make sure I wasn't misleading you entirely um i was just kind of simplifying things and stating it in the context of what we were trying to do and what i felt would be better but i did want to make sure to point out that technically with i'm all and i did you can use negative numbers and thus you can go the opposite direction entirely if that's what you want to do because you know you can start off with you know zero two five if that's too much um, we can go like zero seven five uh, we'll go and start with two five just so we can see see it working a little easier and then we'll use this as a flag because we'll make like a proper infinite mana and we'll call this decrease value or Decrease multiplier. And so the way I would deal with this is we'll go ahead and um, burst. We'll kind of look this over again. And since I'm not seeing any compares right here, and more so any um, comparative action so no like jump if equal jump if less than or move if less than or move if equal um, and, and there are a bunch of comparative stuff but I'm not seeing any of that there so I, I don't think we need to save and restore flags I think we can get away without it They jump up equal to O code. Um, that's mostly because I just like to have a start off with, you know, zero being disabled. We'll say one is infinite. So we'll say jump if not equal to the next label. Um, so that's what this is telling it jump forward to the next label. And then we'll create a generic label there. Go ahead and slap in a jump to O code so that way once we do write this we'll 
be skipping the next check because no need to check this if we know it's already won. So, go ahead and start with our infinite here. Um, so we've got, yeah, so we can use EDX to move stuff around because we know it's going to be set when we get to O code. As long as we don't skip that, and I don't see why we would. I don't actually even know what that is. I think it's going to be an address, honestly, if I remember right looking at it. EDX, EDX, yeah, that's our function for set mana, I guess is what it probably would be called. So our max mana is A64, so we'll do move EDX, our base is not EAX, need to fix that, ESI is our base. ESI plus A64. And, ooh, no. Yeah, ECX is the current value, so we just want to set it with ECX, and then it will set mana based on that anyway. Um, so the only other thing we need to do is zero EDI. Um, and, you know, we could do this a couple different ways, so move EDI zero, um, but that will end up being... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, it will be assembled like that. So uh, more bytes um, where we can use a simpler way. We can use exclusive or I believe that's right. We'll, we'll check that here in just a second. Um, with the same two values. Um, and the way that works, let me look. Okay, so now to dig into the increase value. Let's see what accesses this again. And at this point, really, we just need that right, so we could have just done see what right. But unless you get into a larger game where stuff that's just firing at crazy speeds, um, seeing what access really won't hurt you. Especially if you just know how to look for a right. I mean, obviously we can see here that's a right and that's a right and all the rest of these are reads. So we can go ahead and go with show disassembler. And we don't want to break and trace yet. Oh, still got infinite mana set up. Although I'm betting that still fires. It just probably keeps writing the max value. So let's go ahead. Actually, let's disable that completely for now. So, use some mana. And then break and trace. So we're getting the, in, you know, when it's, Increasing. I would just go with 500 there. So now, come out here. We can see that's probably where it's actually adding. Yeah. So we could just manipulate the value right there. Probably get away with that, but I am a little curious here. Let's see what we find in the next function here. The next, going back one more function call. Ooh, so we got some kind of float being compared here against a zero because we know XOR is zeroing and that's all this is doing is this is doing XOR pack scholar um, oh, you know on one of these we'll actually use the XMM registries um, maybe even somewhere with this and we'll kind of go over that a little bit more um, but at any rate a pack scholar 
is if you notice when we looked at the um, actually we'll see what this value is and look at it here in a second I'll explain it oh yeah it looks like that is a delay time Hopefully you can hear that sound effect. I guess I could put it back on that one. So you can actually see a little bit. It counts down, and about the time it looks like it's hitting zero. It does look like it's got some weird, like it's a double timer or something. Like it hits zero and then goes back up to one for a second. So that may actually be what's also telling it each time it's doing one. I bet it is. I bet if we made that timer set, you know, hard set to zero constantly, this would be an instant recharge. Um, not only with no delay, but it would just slam through increasing it and do it really fast with no delay between each time it increases. Um, so, yeah, looking at um, register stats if we check the flow here um, and we see the XMM registries we can see it's got four floats here and that's what any of the um, PS instruction well not any of those I do think there is some stuff with I can't remember but at any rate so like a move SS um, would just be one whereas like a move um, SD would be two of these, but it would actually just be one as a double. Um, but like move PS, or actually be either move UPS or move APS, which would be aligned pack scholar or unaligned pack scholar. Um, it will move all four of these. It will move the whole registry, and then so X or PS will zero the whole register it'll XOR the whole registry. Um, so by doing it by, you know, to itself, this will zero everything. So, let's play with that a little bit. Let's see what we can find here. What, yeah, that is, ooh, I'm thinking that is our base, isn't it? Because I didn't look at that fast enough. One, two, two, four. Decreasing it. So we could just down here at the check just make like this jump. Um, check if it is that is below zero. I'm thinking we would need to no op that out. Um, just for a quick playing with it what we can do and often it's a pretty good idea if you're going to start messing with stuff too much um, copy out a few lines of instruction stick them somewhere for now just so in case I screw this up it won't be a big deal and then we go, go ahead and copy that and let's just say no op it's asking us if we want to make everything else no ops um, because we're only no off in one byte and then instruction is more than one byte, so we're going to say yes. Yeah, you can hear it kind of instantly, and it is just instantly charged. So that is a infinite mana, too. It's because it charges faster than we can use it. I would imagine there would be something if we only ever recharge by. Ooh, and I do have other stuff already. Yeah, that's nice. I don't remember how that one actually works. Um, if 
but at any rate, we can go ahead and reset that back. Uh, no, this time we don't want to set, because it might end up screwing up this next instruction. That looks like it all got set back correctly. Yeah. Yeah, so we... Kind of actually get an infinite with that, just by changing that jump to it. You know, no whopping this jump out. <coughs> But, because I do like options, um, I'm thinking we can just set it up with a multiplier and then either zero it out or, you know, multiply it by um, some number less than one and just make it a little, or no, by a, a number greater than one and make it work a little faster. Or at least our decrease value here. Yeah, so you can either zero the timer or decrease the, um, or increase the uh, decrease value here to make it run a little faster. So, let's actually give us the option of using the XMM registry here. So we'll actually inject one instruction up. Control Shift B, not Control Alt B. So that is a good one. Let's actually see if we can. Yeah, no, that is not. So we'll go back to that. Control A, Control Alt 7. Don't want to shift that. Mana charge timer. Um, and then if you're custom writing all this stuff out not using templates like I am um, you don't necessarily need to go with uh, super verbose um, naming conventions here you can shorten stuff up as long as it makes sense to you and you know that you'll be able to kind of make sense of it later Here we can get rid of int. I'm not going to be using an integer. We'll go ahead and say three for our multiplier right off the bat here. So this will be a flag again. This will be a scale multiplier. Flyer. So, what we can do here, let's go ahead and start with our checks, our flag checks. So, not equal f. Probably want to jump to exit with that one. So for our infinite or our instant recharge, um, we'll probably want to do XOR PS XMM0 XMM0. Yeah. That's actually all we need to do, I think. And then jump to exit. And we'll end up right into that timer. So then for our multiplier here, what we can do, um, because we know it's going to XMM0, at least the first float in that is going to be set right after this. Um, we can just use that. And this is, in fact, a proper float. So we can say move SS XMM0 EVP plus 8 small 
CSS, XMM0, our float value, and then move SS, EVP plus 8, XMM0. XMM and jump to O code, and that should be done. It should give us what I'm looking for here. And that is again, uh, I, you know, I honestly couldn't say why. I always, when it's a timer, it's always a scale thing, you know, a scale multiplier, or a scale hook, or something like that. Um, but of course, you can use whatever naming conventions that make more sense to you. Definitely recharge this faster and sooner. <coughs> Combine that with our anti decrease hook here. And we still basically got like an infinite thing going here because it charges so fast. this one a little more. Do an instant recharge. And yeah, we definitely got a, basically an infinite mana. Okay, so save it. Close it. Get rid of that. We're done with this. So yeah, I would say that pretty well works for our mana charge hook here. And then really, I don't know other than if we could find. She pretty close all that. <laughs> Um, the only other thing I would say is maybe we can find where, you know, how much it increases it by, but if we were doubling that in conjunction with having this one, um, again, we'd just be getting way over the top. I'm actually even thinking I want to kick this multiplier down a little bit, maybe just times two instead of three.
Okay. Okay, so I'm thinking we're about 45 minutes in. Um, give or take a little bit. I don't know what we'll do next. Probably we'll separate into a different video though. Um, so actually you know what yeah we're gonna go with that cool down um because that one is going to be getting into some different methods to find it um, because you kind of notice it's not something we have a direct visual kind of thing for <coughs> but there is that slight delay of when we can when i can blink again because right now i'm just Kind of clicking the button as fast as I can, and it's only letting me go so fast. And I just had a lot of fun with just blinking all over the place like crazy. You could basically fly with it. Whereas right now we'll fall before we can do it again. Um, but it's very fast. So if I have to slow the game down to you. For me, I mean, I guess if you were super quick, you could, but I'm, I'm not that fast. <laughs> um, so in the next video, we'll be messing with that and kind of figuring out how we're going to do that. So we'll stop there and um, call this one good for now. And yeah, I'll be, since we got a couple minutes here, let's go ahead and clean this table up. This is again getting into more of some particulars of how I use my stuff. But what we can do is so in this main one, um, I just call this underscore main file here. Um, this allows me to have you know multiple scripts get enabled with this main one very easily. So I'll go ahead and put that in there. Disable that. I'm going to enable that now, and that will. I can actually open that back up, and we'll see that it does. You know, all that stuff gets deallocated, so we see zeros, and then it gets reallocated, and we'll or question marks, and then when it gets reallocated, we'll see it update to zeros. In this case, it's not dependent on it. These two scripts don't actually depend on the main hook, so to speak, or the main hooks. Um, but I still tend to prefer to nest it in this way. But it does cause some issues sometimes where if there's a script that doesn't work in here, then you know people in theory don't get access to anything. Um, sometimes I will explain to go ahead and just disable the hiding and then you'll get some that'll just throw an error and tell you you can't do that um, just because go and stick that in with the mana um, just because I you know I might have a, a script that actually is dependent on something there like I said if we were doing a comparison based on that pointer um, but since we're not doing that we wouldn't really, we don't really have to nest that. I don't think that'll work because. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to call this video good. Um, I'll be including this table once again with the post. I probably won't include the modules and all that again. Um, I feel like it's getting a little overly redundant there. Um, but since the table has changed, I will be including the table um, and probably the, the full folder structure once more just because that way you can quickly get access to this stuff. Otherwise, I eventually want to actually add a function somewhere here in the menu that would make life easier if you want to unpack this stuff. But right now, I just don't have that. So I don't want to make you have to go through here and save each one of these to disk and then move it to the right folder and all that stuff. Um, I think if 
I just include the full, you know, not only have the table for people that just want the table to poke around with and make their own table separate from that, or people that want to actually kind of keep building on what I'm building on here. So at any rate, oh, my table file packer there. Forget it re requires stuff and this clears out some important variables. I should have disabled that before packing the files again. Oh well. Okay, so we'll call this one good and I'll see you on the next one.